this video, what I want to show is how to wrap the passenger side of a full print sedan. And so what's different about the passenger side for this whole video series is the driver side was done with a horizontal panel. The passenger side we set up with vertical panels. So again, for me, first thing you think about vertical panels is you have to start registering panels, which can be a little tricky, especially if you're a beginner intermediate installer, especially if you have door handles that are on the body. That could even be tricky for an advanced installer. So for the video, what I really want to hit home and what I want you to pay attention to in this video is, yes, we have vertical panels, which means we have a panel that goes here, we have a panel that goes from the door to the top, door to the top, and then we have a back panel. So again, four, this meant the production theoretically had to trim panels, but what I asked the production department to do is not trim the panels because the designer, when he sequenced it, in the design in the, in the rip for the file for printing, is I asked him to, instead of doing a three quarter inch overlap, I asked him to make a five inch overlap. That allows me to play, okay? Because I knew that you can shift the panels back and forth and when I do this panel, I can cut it on the door, remove the excess film. When I do the back door, I'm gonna cut it here, remove the excess film. So again, technically I'm not gonna have an overlap. This comes into my theory of my technique of uh, scene in sections. So now this car is broken up into a lot of sections. We have front fender, door, door, back fender. This back fender has no natural break here, so it goes all the way to the top. But what you have you know, here though is a natural break here. There's no graphics being put here, plus you have a natural break here. So I'm actually gonna see the vehicle in top and bottom. So if I did a whole vertical panel here, you're gonna see that in the video, what I do is instead of taking this panel here and continuing on, I'm gonna cut it here and separate it because it's top and bottom. So therefore, instead of having an overlap that faces, let's say away from here, because we're gonna start with this panel because this is where the text is, instead of having an overlap that is gonna be facing where the car is going, I'm actually gonna save this piece and this piece for later. And then when I get to this piece here, we're gonna have one overlap here and then I'm gonna build back from there. So it's gonna face this direction. So again, just working in different sections and that saves me, that creates better quality for me and also better speed. So again, instead of wrapping in all these panels, I'm actually gonna wrap this side of the passenger van in one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the running board, the material is 54 inches and it doesn't reach the bottom if I go off on the other side. So again, it's gonna come short and we're gonna fill this in with a different material. On the other side, we're gonna do patches of scrap material. On this side, we're either gonna do black mat or in an earlier clip, what we did is when I was prepping these panels, I noticed that there was a, a wide white bleed on the one of the panels. I cut those off top to bottom and maybe that white scrap will fit at the bottom and look like it's part of the wrap. So again, we're gonna play with it, just show you different ways to fix panels when they come short. So again, this is kind of the overall story for the passenger side, let's get to it. First thing you wanna do when you're setting up the passenger side, in this case, the driver's side was completed, and both graphics are the same, is use the driver's side as your template. So now I can quickly get my measurements and you wanna make sure both are the same. So in this case, if it measures, let's say 11 and a half inches for the bottom of the text on the door, then you wanna make sure that you set it up for the other side. So what I've done is for the bottom, the side of one logo is about four inches from the driver's side door, or I mean the front door, and then I mark the bottom. So again, as I'm laying the panels out, this gives me a quick read of quick placement because again, even though the client can't see both sides at the same time, I think it's important just to make them exactly the same. It's just professional and it gets quality, especially if you're doing any type of fleet work. Someone who has a fleet will notice the fact that you took time to make them both the same. You could just slap it on or you could make them symmetrical. Again, that's just professional. Once you get it roughly in place, you wanna lay out all the panels. Again, these are vertical panels. This is totally different than the driver's side, which is horizontal. So again, what I emphasize at the beginning of the video is also is I didn't trim the whiteout. So again, save the production a little bit of time. I roughly get that end in place with magnets. And again, having magnets, especially when you got vertical panels is key. Double check the measurement just with a water soluble pen there. I shift it down a touch, click it, run my finger again, get it roughly in place there. But again, this is just a ballpark. This is not exact. I'm getting a rough estimate, make sure I'm not going off the chrome. Once that is in place, again, having so many magnets is great, especially if you're working by yourself. Then I'm just roughly matching up the graphics and I feel through here and I notice that the second panel on the door doesn't quite make it all the way to the left. So even though this is not gonna quite match the driver's side, is I shift the first panel back, double check the graphics, make sure they fit top to left, Bob. Does it fit now on the door? Just. So then I take the back panel, make sure it fits, nothing gets cut off by lights. 
And now that I have the panel that I'm going to start with roughly in place, I'm going to take water soluble pens and mark it in place. So again, what I want to emphasize here is technically I'm starting with a panel on the door, but because how I'm going to do this, even though I have vertical panels that theoretically might be overlapped, you're going to see me actually not get any overlaps because the bleed between the panels, the overlap is extra big. So I'm setting each panel up so it's going to wrap in sections. So I'm not going to have any overlaps. So I'm starting with a panel that has to be straight. So again, this back panel has the rapids who is angled. The second panel is just the bowl, nothing straight. So I'm starting with the panel that needs to be straight. Very simple. And again, the overlap is going to be cut off. So again, it doesn't matter where I start. Very straightforward. Then I kind of cheat a little bit and I shift it. So I make sure that the door handle is mostly purple so I don't have to register it. So again, I'm close to the driver's side. Then I do an inlay. Then once I do the inlay, I'm going to masking tape it. And again, there's a video on this series about how to do inlay. So again, don't panic. You will see that. So just pay attention to that video. Once I get it done, the inlay, masking tape it. I'm masking tape the chrome at the top of the molding there. Line everything up to those water soluble pens. I can't say enough about those water soluble pens and creating speed and quality. Then I use the water soluble pen again to trace out the door handle. I'll show two different ways to cut the door handle out. This one on the fly with a pre cut. So I love this pre cut. I do an enclosed shape. Never do a line or a T. That's always dangerous because it might split. Then I do my temporary hinge. Again, four magnets are great for that. Pull the backing paper, very straightforward. Again, four magnets, I can't emphasize enough, work really good here. Use a zippy to cut the backing paper. Pull and focus just around the door handle first. Again, the door handle's the hardest part. Once you get around this door handle, the whole door is flat. Don't work to the handle, work from the handle. So once I get it kind of set up and secure, I wanna create the permanent hinge. And again, with around any raised object, you wanna start it above the raised object and work down. Then I just tuck it into the base of the molding there, but notice I'm not gonna cut it out first. If I need to pick it up by chance, I will. So only cut at the very end. Can't emphasize that enough. Kind of round the angle at the top there, and then wanna use a triangle to get around the raised object. So I'm gonna pull and squeegee to the left, pull and squeegee to the right, and that'll keep it from bunching up behind the handle at the base there. So then I just notice how I not only do I pull away, I squeegee away, and that shifts the tension enough right there so that it scoops with glass. Very critical. And now that it's around the door handle, look how I can kind of kick up the speed gear and really just work left to right and just get it on because it's basically just a very flat door there with this mild recessed area at the bottom. Then I come back and I want to set everything up for cutting because now that the material is squeegeed on, I want to cut. So again, don't kind of cut intermediately. I want to cut in one movement. So I click my blade, all everything is set up, and then I set up the door handle here. So again, door handle is all about tuck and cut. Lots of videos on this on the wrapping suit. Notice I'm cutting on the side of the door handle and that creates about an eighth of an inch or two or three millimeters of film. Cut the excess away. That masking tape is critical. I do the corners first, then the flat area. Notice I get the full tuck under, no wrinkles, super clean and mean. So again, great technique there of using the empty, the tuck and cut method combined with the empty solid to cut out the inlays. And again, videos on that later on in this series. And then I want to cut again, so I just click off my blade so it's super sharp. And notice here, I start with the molding, cut down on the side in between the doors. So again, just cutting on the empty side there, cut at the bottom of the door. Again, start the corners, work away from the corners, then work down from the top down. So I do it all four sides, four movements only. Very, very steady, efficient, and it gets 100% of the cuts. Then I pull all the excess film away in one movement. So again, four movements, one pull, Done. I'll leave the material there for later so I can just throw it all right in the trash. And then I come back with my heat gun and seal the edges. Again, no heat used at all to put the material on the body, just using heat now to seal. And that just means that I didn't overstretch the film at all. Remove the masking tape. Now add new masking tape to the passenger door, the back door. So again, very straightforward here. Now I want to register it again. This is a big question that gets asked in workshops a lot too, is I'm going to do what's called a triple hinge. I set the bottom up, set the top up with magnets, get it roughly in position here. And again, the overlap here is on the door. So again, the overlap is around five inches, six inches. So that's gonna be cut off by the driver's side door. But either way, if you're having a direct overlap, you still wanna do a triple hinge. Here, I set up a magnet, do my water soluble pen marks in case it shifts or moves, easy placement there. And then what I wanna do is I wanna release the backing paper, but instead of working top to, starting off top to bottom now, 
I'm going to start off where the hinge is because again I have the door handle on the body so again it makes it a little trickier so what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the water soluble marks up so again I just kind of pick it up up and down again I don't really worry about it here I just uh, getting perfect I just want to get it close so what I do is I pull it down with glass even though there's wrinkles in the middle and then what I want to do because I want to create a relief cut around the door handle I set up my magnets and I match the water soluble pens so I know that the panel is straight and set up so I get close then I pick it back up and I work towards the registration again so now that I'm close on the left I come back and now I'm gonna make the registration exact so I pick it up tack it and again look at I just love this real time look how many times I pick it up and just make mild adjustments so I get pixel to pixel once I get it pixel to pixel, I lock it in place. And again, not quite there. Now I have it, now I lock it. So I lock it with my thumb or squeegee. And then I wanna pick up the bottom and set the bottom. So notice how I'm pulling away with glass with my free hand. I tack it up so it's exact match there at the bottom, but it's glass to the left as well because the magnets were there. And then I pull the backing paper off, create glass one more time. Again, matching the water soluble prime marks to the, each other. So again, this is going to stay nice and uniform, left to right, top to bottom. Then I pull with glass towards the bottom. I pull down, straight down, make sure the registration tacks up again. My biggest priority is registration. The rest of the panel will fall into like a puzzle piece right there. And here at the top, I just create glass. Now that I have glass, I'm going to set up my permanent hinge. Very important to set up that permanent hinge. Here, I can make a relief cut on the fly. Then I'm going to pull towards the left to create glass and here I'm going to pull to the right but as I pull to the right notice I'm not going to really squeegee around the handle I'm going to kind of focus on the registration again so again I have all this space to kind of make mild adjustments to the panel so that it registers so again I'm focused on the handle so I lock it in here right there so the handles locked but instead of squeegeeing away there I want to keep all that material there loose so I can make any minor adjustments to make sure I can kind of pull it up and use those triangle shapes to make everything match up now that it matches up there and it's matched up to the top and there's glass in between the two marks, I squeegee and lock the registration area in. But notice I'm not going to squeegee on the door because I'm cutting that excess material off. Then because I have glass, I simply just overlap my strokes and work down and all the air is going out towards the wheel well area. So again, just nice and straightforward, it bridges that gap. Here because it's a 54 inch panel, it doesn't quite reach the bottom of the rocker. So I run knifeless tape there. So this is just kind of an extension of where the bottom of the door ends and it's going to come out and you'll see how to finish that in another video on the Wrap Institute. So I just pull that excess film away, cut the bottom, nice, clean and mean. Same setup as before. Here I want to show a different approach if you didn't start off with knifeless tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the excess film away and again I got a lot of overlap coming from the next panel which is at the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it away and I'm going to use, I'm going to cut the material away not just in a straight random line, but I'm using the print. So I notice here I got a nice break between a light red and a dark red, and I'm gonna use that as an overlap. So I'm cutting about a quarter inch away from the edge of the white, the light red, and so that's gonna hide my overlap from the next piece. And I'm cutting on backing paper there, that I'm holding on with magnets, so see how easy it slides out, so it buffers my blade. So I'm not cutting directly on the body, I'm cutting on backing paper. And you could either use knifeless tape, or in this case, I'm using trim line tape, where now I'm matching up the edge of the white, the light, and the dark red. So here, again, saving production, the production department time, I don't need them to cut this trim off for me, because I, because I have such a wide overlap, I can cut it off on the fly. And more importantly, I'm actually gonna cut it one more time. So I roughly match it up, but that door handle's in my way. Instead of letting it stay in my way, I'm gonna cut the excess material off, give myself about an inch, between uh, on the side of the door and that just makes it easier to register for the extension of the bull there what I do is I find out where the back of the bumper meets the fender and here I'm gonna cut I'm cutting on the backing paper and if you don't feel comfortable cutting on the backing paper directly on the body you can move this to a cutting table here but here I know exactly where the bumper and the fender ends there right where I pull it up to where it's gonna end because I have a very good idea there I'm gonna cut the excess film of 45 degrees away from the fender side so I'm gonna get definitely full coverage there and you'll see how this fits later so now this is basically the back of the bull is gonna be an overlay piece on the green bumper so I wrap the bumper first can't emphasize that enough and now for this back section here because there's nothing to make straight really is I, I'm still gonna use the triple hinge but I have took the entire backing paper off and I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna register this point top here 
pull it around with glass at the bottom, register the line there, and then pull straight across with gloss. So again, with glass. So here I did the triple hinge, two hinges on the right, and then I pulled straight across there. So that's almost like a small triangle shape. Here I'm gonna pick up and away and pull nice and even. Nothing to register at the top. So I can just pull it wherever I want. Random image at the top. I'm not connecting with the roof there. Here I'm gonna cut, again, separate around the light there. And watch, I just use that triangle shape to pull with glass. So I neutralize the corner there. And again, if I don't make that cut by the light, that relief cut, it really pops up there. And then I pull with a triangle on the bottom side of the light, nice and even. So once I pull it there, again, that relief cut is key. Look how easily I can squeegee the material on, especially in this back section here. Again, I made that precise cut on the back of the bowl there. So look how easily it just kind of lays over the back bumper there green. And it, you wouldn't even notice that this is an overlay. You thought maybe this is just part of the print when it's done. I'm telling you, it looks really, really good, nice and clean. So either way you want to set this up, again, this overlay piece is just super clean and symmetrical. Looks great. And then here you just want to cut everything out, but here I cut on the side of the door and I'm going to make that overlap now based on the print, not just a random line. I'm going to use that break between the light red and the dark red and it just really flushes. Watch when I pull it away, you don't even see it. So technically it almost looks seamless based on the image. Cut out the gas tank and a gas tank is empty solid, so I'm cutting on the gas tank side so then the material folds to the solid, nice and clean. And then for this top section here, Again, just to be clear, I started off with the front door, then I started off with the back door, and then I did the back fender, but these top pieces belong to the front door and back door. But I'm saving them for later, so by putting these on separate, again, the overlaps face towards the back, and it just makes it much easier. So I'm wrapping this, this vehicle not only in sections, but top and bottom. And again, I'm gonna hide my overlap based on the print, not just a kind of a random straight line that goes through an image. Here, I'm gonna hide the overlap within the image. So again, I just pick it up. And again, my focus now is just really on registering. So I just register the image nice and clean. And this will be my permanent hinge. Once I anchor that, I can pull the rest of the backing paper away. And then I just simply pull with glass. And once I got glass, it's the only time I squeegee. So just squeegee the main surface area, set all the edges up. And then again, pull my knifeless tape, super clean. Again, not much knifeless tape there, but again, by cutting out on the image there, it just blends in and it almost makes it seamless. So again, there's no overlaps on between the doors. There's no overlaps, uh, and there's only minor overlaps at the top here, about four inches, but I because and, and there's only one overlap between the back door and the back fender at the bottom, which you saw, but again, by hiding them within the print, it basically makes it seamless. So again, the vertical panels, aren't tough and there's really no overlaps here because it's nice and simple, straightforward and simple. So again, no need to trim the panels beforehand by the production. And here, the, the, I'm matching up purple to purple. So I went to the cutting table just now. This is a traditional straight overlap there. I'm gonna make it about three quarters of an inch, very straightforward. And there's only purple meeting from the top section of the door to where the fender is. So it's just purple on purple. So again, for me, this is just basically just like putting the panel on. So again, I want that high quality straight overlap here so I just pick it up over, I get the temporary hinge with the magnets, create my permanent hinge there at the start, take the entire backing paper off, pull with glass, squeegee it on, done. Very straightforward. So again, nice, good, clean, symmetrical overlaps. Now is pretty much the only time that I grab my heat on this entire section, just to seal the edges and make sure there's no bubbles, nothing lifting, but again, very straightforward. Great way to use vertical panels here, especially if you got 48 inches. So again, almost seamless, great stuff. Thanks for watching, Justin Payton.